डियर फ्रेंड्स जय भीम नमो बुद्धाय आई वॉज टेलिंग यू अबाउट निब्बान द बुद्धिस्ट कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ निब्बान और निर्वाण एज इट इज कॉल्ड इन संस्कृत निब्बान इज ए पाली वर्ड दिस इज फ्रॉम दिस बुक बाय वनरेबल नारा थेरा द नेम ऑफ द बुक इज द वे टू निब्बान published by buddhist cultural center sri lanka <coughs> we have finished metta and now we will start karuna one of the way to nibbana karuna or compassion the second virtue that sublimates man is compassion or karuna it is defined as that which makes the hurts of the good keeper when others are subjected to suffering or that which dissipates the sufferings of others its chief characteristic is the wish to remove the woes of others the hurts of compassionate persons are even softer than flowers they do not and cannot rest satisfied until they relieve the sufferings of others at times they even go to the extent of sacrificing their lives so as to alleviate the sufferings of others the story of the vyagri jatak where the bodhisattva sacrificed his life to save a striving tigress and her cups may be cited as an example it is the compassion that compels one to serve others with altruistic motives a truly compassionate person lives not for himself but for others he seeks opportunities to serve others expect nothing in return not even gratitude who need compassion many admit us deserve our compassion the poor and the needy the sick and the helpless the lonely and the destitute the ignorant and the vicious the impure and the undisciplined are some that demand the compassion of kind hearted noble noble minded people men and women to whatever religion or to whatever race they belong some countries are materially rich but spiritually poor while some others are spiritually rich but materially poor both these pathetic conditions have to be taken into consideration by the materially rich and spiritually rich it is the paramount duty of the wealthy to come to the succor or help of the poor who unfortunately lack most of the necessities of life surely those who have in abundance can give to the poor and the needy their surplus without inconveniencing themselves once a young student removed the door curtain in his house and gave it to a poor person telling his good mother that the door does not feel the cold but the poor certainly do such a kind hearted attitude in young men and women is highly commendable it is gratifying to note that some wealthy countries have formed themselves into various philanthropic bodies to help underdeveloped countries especially in asia and africa in every possible way charitable organizations have also been established in all countries by men and women and students to give every possible assistance to the poor and the needy religious bodies also perform their respective duties in this connection in their own humble way homes from the aged orphanages and other similar charitable institutions 
are needed in underdeveloped countries. The beggar problem has still to be solved in some countries where begging has become a profession. Out of compassion for the fortunate for the unfortunate beggars, this problem has to be solved satisfactorily by the respective governments as the existence of beggars is an insult to any self-respecting nation. As the materially rich should have compassion on the materially poor and try to elevate them, it is duty of the spiritually rich too to have compassion on the spiritually poor and sublimate them though they may be materially rich. Wealth alone cannot give, cannot give genuine happiness. Peace of mind can be gained not by material treasures but by spiritual treasures. Many in this world are badly in need of substantial spiritual food which is not easily obtained as the spiritually poor far exceed the materially poor numerically as they are found both amongst the rich and the poor. Even more than poverty, sickness prevails throughout the world. Many are physically sick, some are mentally sick. Science provides effective medicine for the former but not the latter, who very often languish in mental hospitals. There are causes for these two kinds of diseases. Compassionate men and women must try to remove the causes if they wish to produce an effective cure. Effective measures have been employed by various nations to prevent and cure diseases not only of mankind but also of animals. The Buddha set a noble example by attending on the sick himself and exhorting his disciples with the memorable words, He who ministers unto the sick ministers unto me. Some selfish doctors render free services towards the alleviation of suffering. Some expend their whole time and energy in ministering to the poor patients even at the risk of their lives. Hospitals and free dispensaries have become a blessing to humanity, but more are needed so that the poor may benefit by them. In undeveloped countries, the poor suffer through lack of medical facilities. The sick have to be carried for miles and with great inconvenience to the nearest hospital or dispensary for medical treatment. Sometimes they die on the way. Pregnant mothers suffer most. Hospitals, dispensaries, maternity homes, etc. are essential needs in backward village areas. The lowly and the destitute deserves the compassion of wealthy men and women. Sometimes servants and workers are not well paid, well fed, well clothed and more often than not they are illiterated. Justice is not meted out to them. They are neglected and are powerless as there is nobody to plead for them. Clearing case of inhuman cruelty receive publicity in some exceptional cases. Many such cases are not unknown. These unfortunate ones have no other alternative but to suffer meekly even as Mother Earth suffers everything in silence. When the grief is unbearable, they commit suicide in utter desperation. The vicious and wicked and the ignorant deserve compassion even more than those who suffer physically as they are mentally and spiritually sick. They should not be condemned and despised but sympathized with for their falling and defects. Though a mother has equal compassion towards all her children, still she may have more compassion towards a sick child. Even so great compassion should be exercised towards the spiritually sick as their sickness ruins their character. 
the buddha for instance has great compassion towards the kotishan ambapali and towards angulimal the murderer both of whom later became his converts and underwent a complete reformation in character we must understand that greatness is latent in all however wicked they may be perhaps one appropriate word at the right moment may change the whole outlook of a person <clears throat> the emperor ashok perpetrated many crimes so much so that he was stigmatized ashok the wicked or chand ashok later the words from a young novice diligence is the path to the deathless produced such a great change in him that he became ashok the righteous or dham ashok the buddha's advice is to shun the company of the foolish that does not mean that the good should not associate with them so as to reform them people avoid those who suffer from contagious diseases but compassionate physicians attend on them so as to heal them otherwise they might die in the same way the wicked may die spiritually if the good are not tolerant and compassionate towards them as a rule buddh went in search of the poor the ignorant and the vicious but the good and the virtuous came in search of the buddh like metta or loving kindness karuna or compassion should also be extended without limit towards all suffering and helpless beings including dumb animals born and unborn to deny the rights and privileges of mankind on account of caste color or race is inhuman and cruel to feast on the flesh of animals by passion to rain bombs from above and ruthlessly destroy millions of men women and children is worst form of cruelty that deluded man has ever perpetrated today this pitiless vengeful world has sacrificed the most precious things on earth at the altar of brute force whither has compassion fled the world needs today compassionate men and women to banish violence and cruelty from the face of the earth buddhist compassion it should be noted does not consist in mere shedding of tears and the like for the indirect enemy of compassion is passionate grief compassion embraces all sorrow stricken beings while loving kindness embraces all living beings happy or sorrowful this is the end of our topic karuna here we will start mudita the third aspect of nibbana upekha and the fourth in the next other video thank you very much jai bhim namo bhutaya